What's up guys, Rex here. In today's video, I'll be going over the complete timeline of someone applying to medical school through the American Medical College Application Service, or AMCAS. So this video does not cover people applying to DO schools, and it also doesn't apply to some select Texas schools who do not use AMCAS. But if you are interested in applying to medical school through AMCAS, this video is for you to give you an idea of when things happen throughout the entire very long application cycle. Or if you've already applied and you're wondering when you can expect that next step to happen, hopefully this video is also a resource for you. So the application cycle really starts with a couple things that don't have a really hard date to them. And so the first being you have to take your MCAT before you apply. There's MCAT dates. You can look on the AMCAS website that they range pretty much year round. And then you also can expect to get your score about a month later is typically when it is. You can also look up those test dates. That's something to consider. Typically applicants will take the MCAT maybe the spring before they apply. It's also reasonable to take it like early summer. Some people take it the summer before they even apply. There's no total right answer, but it's something to consider and make sure you plan ahead. Additionally, you have to ask for your letters of evaluation some good amount of time in advance so your letter writers have time to write your letters of evaluation and that is not the last piece of the puzzle schools are waiting on to have your application be completed. The other thing that is sort of a piece of the puzzle is the CASPER exam. Only some schools require the CASPER exam but it's becoming more prevalent and so that is something you have to take before you apply or maybe during while you're applying there's no total right answer but that's another thing that just has to be done before schools can fully look at your application and i'm sure hopefully so this video lasts longer there might be some other test that is new to get medical applicants to pay more money to make the process more expensive and schools have a yet another metric to measure students by so any of those sort of quantitative metrics whether it is the CASPER exam or the MCAT have to be taken at some point either while you're applying or before you apply. The first hard date that matters is when the AMCAS primary application opens. This year that is May 3rd. Typically it's just early May. That's when your primary application opens. That's where you fill out all of your coursework, all of your grades and stuff like that, background information on yourself, demographic stuff, and that's where you also write your personal statement then you can submit that primary application starting in the end of May. Along with that, you need to submit your official transcripts to AMCAS so that they can verify and process your application. And there's hard dates of when you have to submit your primary by that typically is around November 1st, maybe October 1st for some schools, mid-December for other schools. Typically that date isn't super relevant as far as it's better to apply earlier. Most people are going to be submitting their primary application in either June or July, maybe August. Earlier is better. So those deadline dates aren't super important. I'll additionally mention if you are applying to the early decision program, August 1st is the deadline to be able to be considered for the EDP program. Now, once you've submitted your primary application and sent your official transcripts to AMCAS, they can begin the process of actually verifying and processing your application and sending it to schools. Typically, this takes a couple weeks for them to do. They give a caveat that it might take up to six weeks if they're really busy in the middle of the cycle. The earliest they will be able to do this is end of June for this coming year, 2020. That will be June 25th. And so if you apply super early as soon as you can at the end of May, expect the end of June being the time about a month later that schools will actually receive your transcript. Additionally, this can be delayed even longer for a variety of reasons if you sort of fail verification the first time because typically something might not line up perfectly between your transcript and what you submitted in what your coursework was. So understand that there potentially can be delays that will make this go even longer, but the real important date is when your application gets sent to schools more so than when your application gets submitted to AMCAS. Now, once schools receive your application, that's typically when they'll start sending you secondaries. Now, what a secondary is, is essentially more essays that the school specifically wants you to write that are unique to them. Some schools don't have any secondary essays. Some schools have a lot looking at you do, and some schools have a video format for you to do, like Carl Illinois School of Medicine that I applied to. So now at this point, you want to be actually completing these secondaries and sending them off to schools. You'll hear some people say that you should always try to have a turnaround time from when you receive a secondary to when you write it and actually submit it to your school of two weeks. But I think it's more important to consider at this point, holistically, do I have all of the boxes checked such that schools can look at my application and fully review it? So this is, do they have your 
primary application? Do they have your completed secondary application? Do they have all of your tests, whether that's MCAT or CASPER? And do they have your completed letters of evaluation from the letter writers you requested to send to that school? Now, if your secondary is the last piece of that puzzle, it's probably good to have a quicker turnaround. I think within a month is reasonable. So broadly speaking, people who apply as early as possible might expect that by like August 1st is when their application is totally completed and schools are ready to review it. Now, when schools start reviewing application, you can maybe expect to receive some interview invites. Now, this is correlated somewhat to the earlier you complete your application, the earlier you might have an interview invite. That being said, you might complete an application, have it totally done, ready to go on August 1st, and not receive an interview invite from that school until mid-February. It all depends on things outside of your control. And so once you receive your interview invite, you should attend that interview. An interview season essentially runs from August to March, broadly speaking. And once you have completed your interview, some people send some sort of update letter or something like that. I have a link down below to one of my videos talking about update letters. So that's sort of an optional part that might be part of the application cycle, but you wait around and receive either your acceptance, rejection, or waitlist from that school. The earliest acceptances are given out on October 1st by the early decision program schools. Otherwise, normal schools can start giving out acceptances as early as October 15th. And generally by March 15th is when AMCAS requires schools to have given out at least enough acceptances to fill all of the spots in their class. Now, there will be many more acceptances to be given after March 15th, but that's sort of the first wave of acceptances sort of ends around March 15th. Then schools have their second look weekends, typically end of March, early April. Due to current events, when I went through the cycle in 2020 and this year, 2021, I assume Second Look Weekend will be virtual. In more typical years, Second Look Weekend is an actual in-person event on a weekend that you really get to know about a school and really help you make your decision of where you want to attend. But after that's done, the next important date is April 15th, which is when you have to narrow down to holding only three acceptances. You can have three acceptances and 20 wait lists, but if you had five acceptances previously, you have to notify at least two of those schools that you would like to withdraw your acceptance and only hold three active acceptances. Then by April 30th, you have to narrow that down to one active acceptance. So due to these cutoffs is when you start to see the most waitlist movement around that date of April 15th and April 30th when students are withdrawing acceptances and now schools have to fill those spots. And this waitlist movement can continue theoretically until the first day of class because there's often chain reactions of people get off a waitlist and they get accepted, which causes down the line them to turn down a different school, which makes someone else come off a waitlist and then they turn down a school. So it's hard to predict exactly when waitlist movement will finish, but around this time period also is when you have to start making your like formal deposits at schools, which can be a significant percentage of tuition. It might only be $100, very much school specific. You might also have to submit a background check or your official transcript if you are still finishing up some schooling. But now at this point, hopefully you are finally done with your very long application cycle and ready to start your first day of medical school. Maybe someday, late July, early August is a typical start date for the medical school year. Okay, real quick, running through the steps, Take your MCAT at some point before or during the cycle, ask for your letters of evaluation, take the CASPER, any other exams that might be required in the future, stuff like that. Then you can start your application in early May and start filling out your primary with AMCAS. Then you can start submitting it at the end of May with AMCAS. It might take AMCAS about a month, it might take them six weeks for them to actually process, verify your application once they have received your official transcript so they can look at all of your courses, make sure they line up. They send that to schools, typically end of June. Then once schools receive your application, they can start sending you secondaries. You can complete those secondaries, send them back to the school. At this point, you go through your checklist, make sure the school has your completed, verified primary application, your secondary application, all of your completed letters of evaluation, and then any tests like the MCAT or the CASPER or any other future tests that become required. Then you wait around for your interview invitation, which can really happen anytime between August and March, give or take. Then you attend your interview again, anytime between like August or March, give or take. Maybe send in some update letters, get your acceptances, wait lists, rejections, all of that point. Then be ready for second look weekend, usually late March, early April, somewhere in that time frame. Then by April 15th, narrow down to three schools. April 30th, narrow down to one school. Shuffle around on some wait lists potentially. Be ready to submit some portion of your tuition as like your deposit. 
do your background check, submit your final transcripts if that's required, and enjoy the life of a medical student, which you'll be starting end of July, early August, sometime at that point, school specific, but you are ready to go. So that is the, in my opinion, very long, very complicated, maybe too long, maybe too complicated application cycle for someone applying through AMCAS to medical school. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. I'll have over on your right a link to my playlist of all of my other videos giving advice with the application cycle. So check them out if you're interested. I have a lot of other videos that hopefully are helpful. If you want to catch more of these videos as I upload them, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Thank you.